Now that we've introduced matrix transformations as a type of function that takes a vector as an input and then multiplies it by a matrix to map it into some other vector, well, we're thinking about functions, so it makes sense to ask if we can compose matrix transformations and what that looks like. If you need an introduction to matrix transformations in general, link in the description to my video on that. Just like any two functions, we can indeed compose two matrix transformations. So for example, a matrix transformation TA could take a vector X from RN and map it into RK. Then we could have this other matrix transformation TB, which takes that TA of X image from RK and maps it to another vector in Rm. That resulting vector would be the composition TB circle TA. So performing both of those matrix transformations successively, TA and then TB, that is the composition of the transformations, denoted like this. And again, it's pronounced TB circle TA of X. And it's defined very naturally like this. TB circle TA of X is equal to TB of TA of X. So to evaluate this, we plug X into this transformation, TA, and then that image gets plugged into TB. The composition of two matrix transformations is to just perform the transformations successively. That's the composition. A natural question to ask is, is a composition of matrix transformations a matrix transformation? We've seen that not all transformations are matrix transformations. So if we compose two matrix transformations, does that give us another matrix transformation? Turns out it does, and we'll prove it now. We previously proved this theorem, link in the description, that a transformation is a matrix transformation if and only if it satisfies the homogeneity property and the additivity property. So we'll use this theorem to prove that a composition of matrix transformations is also a matrix transformation by proving it satisfies these two properties. Furthermore, we'll prove that the standard matrix for the composition of matrix transformations is the product of the matrices from the component functions. Hopefully this feels pretty reasonable, since a matrix transformation is just multiplying by a matrix, the composition of two matrix transformations is indeed a matrix transformation because it's just multiplying by the product of the two matrices. So getting into the proof, here is the proof for additivity and the proof for homogeneity. In each case, we have two arbitrary vectors from the domain Rn, say x and y, and then we just repeatedly apply the homogeneity and additivity properties of Ta and Tb individually, because we know that Ta and Tb are matrix transformations, so they satisfy these properties, and we can just use those properties to prove both of these results. I'll walk you through the details for additivity. Homogeneity is similar. Tb circle Ta of x plus y by definition of the composition of the transformations is TB of TA of X plus Y. We have X plus Y in the TA transformation, but TA is a matrix transformation. So it has the additivity property and we can split this sum into TA of X plus TA of Y. But then we have this sum, TA of X plus TA of Y, in the matrix transformation TB, which again satisfies the additivity property. Hence, we can split this up as TB of TA of X plus TB of TA of Y. But then by definition of the composition of the transformations, this is just TB circle TA of X, and this on the right is TB circle TA of Y. So indeed, TB circle TA of X plus Y is TB circle TA of X, plus TB circle TA of Y. So it does satisfy the additivity property, and similarly we show that it satisfies the homogeneity property. So indeed, the composition of two matrix transformations is itself a matrix transformation. Which leaves the question, what is the standard matrix for the composition? Well, since we just proved that the composition is a matrix transformation, we know that it has a standard matrix. There is a 
M by N matrix C so that TB circle TA equals TC. It does have a standard matrix. Note the dimensions of this standard matrix, M by N. M, the number of rows, is the codomain of the second transformation in the composition. And N, the number of columns of the standard matrix, is the dimension of the domain of that first composition. This is because the standard matrix for the composition will need M equations to describe how to calculate the M components that are in an M-dimensional vector. And it will have n columns because there are n variables from Rn that could be plugged in. All right, coming back down to the proof, we know that Tc of a vector x is equal to Tb circle Ta of x because we've taken C to be the standard matrix for this composition. So Tc of x equals Tb circle Ta of x. But then by definition, that's Tb of Ta of x. But then by definition of a matrix transformation, TA of X is just the matrix A times the vector X. But similarly, TB of AX is just the matrix B times A times X. By the associativity property of matrix multiplication, this is equal to B times A times the vector X. But certainly that is the matrix transformation TBA of X. Thus, we see that Tc of x equals Tba of x, and we've previously proven that the standard matrix for matrix transformation is unique. Link in the description to that proof. Hence, it must be that C equals Ba. If C is a standard matrix for Tb circle Ta, well, C must be the product of the standard matrices for those individual transformations, B times A, which feels pretty reasonable. Now that we know how to find the standard matrix for a composition of matrix transformations, let's go ahead and do an example. Let T1 be the matrix transformation from R cubed to R squared, and T2 be the matrix transformation from R squared to R cubed. We could also call these linear transformations because, as we've previously proven, a transformation from Rn to Rm is a matrix transformation, if and only if it is a linear transformation. And let's say that these transformations are given by these equations. We are asked to find the standard matrices for T2 circle T1 and T1 circle T2. We know that will require us to find the standard matrices for the individual transformations and then multiply them together. Before we do that, let's quickly think about dimension here. T2 circle T1, for example. We know that the dimensions of the standard matrix for T2 will be 3 by 2, because the codomain is r cubed and the domain is r squared. Similarly, the dimensions of the standard matrix for the transformation T1 will be 2 by 3, because the codomain is r squared and the domain is r cubed. Thus, we see that we will be able to multiply these standard matrices together, and the dimensions of the standard matrix for the resulting composition will be 3 by 3. That's just nice to be aware of. Let's go ahead and find the standard matrices for T2 and T1 so that we can find the standard matrices for the compositions. We've previously seen how the standard matrix for a matrix transformation depends completely on how that transformation transforms the standard basis vectors of the domain. The standard basis vectors of R cubed, the domain of T1, are seen here. So we'll take those three standard basis vectors and plug them into the transformation T1, and we'll be able to use these images to build the standard matrix. If we plug 1, 0, 0 into the transformation T1, we get the vector 1, 0. If we plug 0, 1, 0 into the transformation T1, we're going to get negative 2, 1. Finally, if we plug 0, 0, 1 into the transformation T1, we're going to get 0, 1. We can then take these images to build the standard matrix. We take 1, 0 and use that as the first column, then negative 2, 1 and use that as the second column, and then 0, 1 as the third column. Again, the images of the standard basis vectors make the columns of the standard matrix. So this is our standard matrix that we'll call A. We then complete a similar process for T2. The domain of T2 is R squared, so these are the relevant standard basis vectors. We'll then plug those in to the transformation T2 and use the images to build the standard matrix. 
plugging one zero into the transformation T2 produces the vector four one zero. Plugging zero one into the transformation T2 produces the vector zero negative one one. We then use these images to make up the columns of the standard matrix. 4, 1, 0 is our first column, and 0, negative 1, 1 is our second column. Then, to find the standard matrix for T2, circle T1, we take the standard matrix for T2, which we just found, that's the matrix B, and we multiply this by the standard matrix for T1, which is A, which we also just found. Then we just have to carry out this matrix multiplication. Matching this row up with this column will produce an entry of 4, and then this row with this column will produce an entry of negative 8. Then this row with this column will produce an entry of 0. Then this row matched up with this column will produce an entry of 1. This row matched up with this column will produce an entry of negative 2 minus 1, so negative 3. This row matched up with this column will produce an entry of negative 1. This row matched up with this column will produce an entry of 0. This row matched up with this column will produce an entry of 1, and this row matched up with this column will produce an entry of 1. So this is the standard matrix for the composition T2 circle T1. Just as we previously discussed, it has dimensions 3 by 3. So the effect of composing these two transformations in this order on a vector is actually to just multiply the vector by this standard matrix. In a similar way, we can calculate the standard matrix for T1 circle T2, except instead of doing B times A, like we just did, we have to do A times B. And so we can see whether or not the transformation is going to commute will depend entirely on whether or not the matrices commute. In general, matrix multiplication we know is not commutative, so we would not expect the composition of matrix transformations to be commutative either, since it relies on matrix multiplication. Beginning this process, we match this row up with this column, which is going to produce an entry of 4 minus 2, so 2. Then this row with this column, which will produce an entry of positive 2. Then this row with this column, which will produce an entry of 1. And then this row with this column, which will produce an entry of 0. So this is the standard matrix for the composition T1 circle T2. The effect of composing T1 and T2 on a vector x is to just multiply that vector x by this standard matrix. Certainly, the composition T1 circle T2 is different from the composition T2 circle T1. We can see their standard matrices are different. The order does matter. So once again, since AB, a matrix product, doesn't generally equal BA, that product in the other order, matrix composition TA circle TB doesn't generally equal the opposite order TB circle TA. That is, the composition of matrix transformations is not commutative. But in the future, we'll see some examples of non-commutative transformations and some that actually do commute. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you'd like to help support what I do, please consider joining as a channel member or pledging on Patreon for early and exclusive access to certain videos, as well as these lecture notes. You can check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlist in the description. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind. Two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments. The union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.